Hi, this is Kendra from Red Gates Advocate Team, and I want to show you something that it took me far too long to figure out about how to configure a trigger on a build pipeline in Azure DevOps. And I'll show you why I think it's cool too. I've got an example pipeline here set up with the Stack Overflow database. The folks at Stack Overflow are kind enough to share data dumps of this database, and it's a fun one to experiment with. And I have been running some things in this database, but what I want to look at is the pipeline. If I edit the pipeline and I look at the triggers, I have this pipeline set up for continuous integration. I have it currently set up for continu continuous integration on more than one branch. So I've got master and releases configured here. And this filter for anything that's under a folder named releases, that is the thing that I had the hardest time figuring out how to do this here. Here is why. If we click add here, then it puts master in the dropdown right away. And if I click this little button, I can see, hey, I've already got something in releases. And what I kept trying to do was selecting this and then like double clicking here, but notice it keeps just taking me back down to the filter. So I kept trying to see can, if I hit delete, no, nothing happens. <laughs> Once I have selected an individual item there, I thought my keyboard was broken. It's not broken. You just can't edit that in the way that the UI is now, but you can, as you can see, it is totally possible to get this here. Here is how, I didn't find this intuitive at all. In this little box that says filter my branches, you can type in there. You wanna type your desired pattern in there. So I wanna type releases and it looks like this is just searching for me, right? But I actually wanna go ahead and type what I want in there and then hit enter that will populate the field like you want it. You can do this with the include. You can do this with the exclude. Just one of those little things that I didn't find intuitive at all. So why might I want to do this, for example? Well, you also might want to do this for feature branches, for example. But right now, I don't have continuous integration set up for feature branches. What I do have is I have some automation set up for pull requests. The master branch says, hey, you can only push to this branch with a pull request. And uh, the pull request includes some automation there. That is set up by a branch policy. But for release branches, what I wanted to set this up to demo here is anytime that I create a branch under the releases folder and push it here, I want a build to automatically kick off. And then further in my releases pipeline, I have a release pipeline that has a branch filter. And if we go in there into that release pipeline and we look at my triggers here, hey, I've got a similar thing there that says, I want this to work on branches under the releases folder there. So let's test this out. I am just working locally in Git uh, here and I've done a poll recently. Let's go ahead and do Git. Uh, we'll do checkout branch and we'll do releases and we'll call this super corgi because I give everything really intuitive names. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, push this branch. Now I'm super lazy, so I just type git push and then it tells me the syntax to run. <laughs> which I copy and paste. And now I am pushing that up to Azure DevOps. Now, if I look back in my pipeline here, hey, this has started just now. And if we look at what it's running, it is running on releases, super corgi, whoop, whoop. So that is in action and my build is going. I've got this, if we look at what's happening in there, it is firing up the agent job. So I have my agent uh, set up on my local machine and I've just started up this VM. So it's just getting started uh, talking uh, from Azure DevOps services online uh, here and running the agent job here. The first time I do this after starting the VM, it's a little slow to get going. It's now building the project, the build, happened real fast with SQL change automation and we can see that we've got success. Now looking over in my releases pipeline, we've got 
release to happening in here. I've got some stages set up in there where it's doing uh, some things with our red gate extensions in there. But I love that this is all happening specifically for the pipeline that's on, or the specifically for the branch that is on the filter that I specified there. The hardest thing about getting this set up was actually me figuring out specifically on the build pipeline, it was really tricky, but specifically that little bit where to specify the filter on the triggers, I needed to type into that filter box right here and then hit enter in the filter box to get it to take effect. Hope this helps someone else out there who sit, hits this same confusion or a similar confusion with the GUI. I'm Kendra from Redgate. Thanks for watching.